Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode uh, 14. Episode or installment or serving 14 of Liam Small Abridges A History of Newfoundland by D.W. Prowse, 20 pages at a time, every day until the bars reopen. Um, as you can see, I'm doing well. I'm maintaining my sanity. Um, here at the table now, got a uh, uh, some Michelob Ultra here with me right now. You can see in my glasses there. I've been watching South Park. That's my uh, it's my background uh, reading music episodes of South Park. I am going to take these off because I feel like that's distracting. Um, okay, we're going to dive right in. Uh, a little bit of a shorter one today, I think. Um, so at the end of the last episode, uh, we finished the last bit uh, hearing about. Uh, the last of the French in Newfoundland. Not really the last of the French in Newfoundland, but the last of the war uh, between the English and the French in Newfoundland. Um, you know, at least for the time being. That was by signing the Treaty of Utrecht, um, which actually happened over in, like, somewhere in Europe. That's why it's called that. Um, so, basically, and again, just want to restate the Treaty of Utrecht, because I got a little bit confused in the last episode. Um, basically, England, when, I was talking, when he talks about the treachery, of England ceding to, to France. So England retained Newfoundland. We we kept Newfoundland. And, but we could have had, like, the whole thing. But we gave from, like, like basically the whole northern part of Newfoundland to the French. Like, fishing rights in the French. In, on the northern shores of Newfoundland, the French retained fishing rights there. I don't think they could settle, but they could still fish. And, you know, they could still set up harbors and stuff like that. Um... And that's, you can tell by all the names of the places up, up you know, Bay Bear, you know, stuff like that, um, up on the Northern Penn. So you can pretty much tell where French settled because of the names of places. Likewise, uh, the same thing for us. It's actually like one of the last points um, in this episode. Uh, but yeah, so the Treaty of Utrecht, just so we're clear. So the French were still here. England retained Newfoundland. They kicked the French out of Placentia and the Southern Shore, but they still gave them like some of the best fishing on the island. And everyone was kind of like, what the fuck did you do that for? But that's, those were the terms. Just so we're all fucking caught up. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the end of chapter 10. Um, I actually ran a little bit further into that one. Um, I just wanted to get to the end of the chapter because this, this episode starts off with a big old appendix. Uh, that's why I said this is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, there's a whole bunch of shit here. It's just, it's, it's, it's all just talking about like a couple of different campaigns and because it was so well documented, we just have like a bunch of different players' accounts of sort of how everything went down. Um... The campaign of 1704, 1705, that's not when they took it, but uh, that's when they, they got super cold, the French got super cold, and they, they tried to take it and had to go back. Um, no event in the whole of our history is so fully recorded as the siege of Fort William. We can trace the course of events from day to day after a lapse of almost 200 years. So we've got, like, Charlevoix's account, we got Penhallow's uh, description, we got Campbell's account, we have Campbell's further account... We have Richard Sampson's account, uh, Rupee's account, R-O-O-P-E, I still don't, uh, Rupee's account, uh, Rupee's further account, um, there's nothing, it's just, it just describes, you know, sort of how things went, what the conditions were like, um, uh, you know, and because it's so well documented, go fucking look it up if you're super interested, um, but it's just re it's just rehashing the stuff we already talked about, just in greater detail. Um, we have another French account, ah, there's fucking, there's so much appendix, it's amazing. Um, Lord Dartman's account, uh, Dartman's account in 1706, yada, yada, yada. Um, then we jump into the capture of St. John's in 1708. Um, I had just more accounts, Charlevoix's account, we discussed all this, how the French, uh, took the city, blah, blah, blah. The first English account, we have the Post Boy, February 8th, which, uh, the Post Boy, I guess, is just the fucking newspaper. John Collins' account, remember John Collins, he was a good guy. Um, Mr. William Keane's journal, I don't know why someone stole his journal, um, oh, Terms of Surrender, this is one part I was going to read, um, so the terms of the surrender, um, uh, this is of taken St. John's, remember, this isn't, of, this isn't the Treaty of Utrecht, this isn't, like, 17 fucking 13 or whatever it was, no, this is, like, um, this is in 1709, it looks like, uh, so just want to quote here, the inhabitants of St. John's, Petty Harbor, Babels, Kitty Vitty, Tar Bay, not sure where that is, Tor Bay, Tar Bay, T-A-R-B, Tar Bay, have we been pronouncing it right the whole time, um, uh, Secretary, uh, desired, uh, Mr. St. Ovid to grant us liberty to ransom or buy our goods as specified in the nine following articles, so they surrendered, but, you know, you can't 
completely fuck us. You're gonna let us get get out of here, sell our stuff, do whatever. Um, so first, we promised to pay Mr. Saint Ovid for his order a hundred quintals for each shallop and fifty for each half shallop. Whatever those are. Sent fishing with the fish first uh, cured, or if the English take this port to St. Ovid's order in London, 70 and 35 pounds sterling, respectively, in August or October. Second, that our houses and clothes be preserved. Leave us our houses and our clothes. Third, that no damage be done to our stages and boats. Fourth, that said St. Ovid is to furnish us 20 hogsheads per salt shallop ransomed. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, fifth, that the French do not waste our victuals. Sixth, that our boats be allowed to go fishing. Seventh, that any French plundering, uh, us shall make restitution and be punished by Mr. St. Ovid. So stop fucking with us. Uh, seventh, that any French plundering, oh yeah, just read that one. Eighth, we promise to be neuter until our ransom be paid. So I guess we're going to the vet. Uh, neuter. Ninth, if the French retain Newfoundland, we have the liberty to go to the new or old England and remain in the country and retain our houses. So, cool. That's just terms of the surrender uh, of the fort and the surrounding areas. Uh, that's when the French took St. John's after successfully not taking St. John's before they ultimately surrendered to the English a few years later. Are we good? Uh, tell me if we're not. Um, <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Uh, just Captain Crow's laws. This guy, Captain Crow, had some things to say. <laughs> Don't care. Uh, Sir N. Trevanion's orders and fishery scheme. These are just a few fishing rules. Um, it's all just like, uh, what do I got here? The fishery scheme for 1712. There's a few just like rules referred to annex scheme for number of English planters. Second, planters receive little sus uh, sustenance from the countries and kill few beavers and other wild beasts. Inhabitants have most salt provisions and other fresh provisions. Blah, 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 blah. No wine or brandy brought from New England. Only rum and molasses. It's just like a state of uh, state of affairs in 1712. Um, general court held twice a week. An admiral and vice admiral to assist and endeavor to settle differences relating to planters and boat keepers, servants, etc. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long appendix. Um, okay, but that's it. That's a good way to skip through 15 fucking pages in one little chunk there. Um, so, moving into chapter 11. With the reign of George I, new king time, new king time. He reigned from 1714 all the way up to 1727. It's so weird when you think of a Queen Elizabeth now. She's been there for like 362 years or something. But like these guys were only kings for like fucking like a decade. Top sometimes. They're just, just dying off. Uh, so I, there's only a couple notes because he had a short reign. Uh, in 1714, there were difficulties about fishing rooms in Placentia sold by French to planters and officers. In 1715, Spaniards not allowed to fish by order of Placentia, the governor of Placentia, sorry. In 1718, difficulties with the French about English settlers' fishing establishments near Cape Bonavista. Uh, claim made against by, uh, claim again made by the Biscians. Remember those guys? They get a little, at this time, Biscians. Uh, as a little nook of Spain there. Uh, they they were not allowed to fish. They were denied um, a claim uh, to fish in Newfoundland. Uh, and in 1723, the grant of the salmon fishery to Skiffington between Cape Bonavista and Cape John. Didn't seem that important, but it was the last one there. It was short, so right. Uh So just a quote here. Uh, wait, I'll make sure I'm at the right place in my notes here. Page 274. Yeah, important dates. So, as a result of the peace, we see, uh, basically, we see an increase in the English fishery now in the area, because you don't got to worry about war, I guess. Privateering and piratism has dropped off a little bit. Um, you know, and the, and the planters were basically, the planters and the English fishermen were able to now kind of live and work and, you know, subsist without the fear of the French and the Abenaki um, Indians killing them, slaughtering them, stuff like that. So, that's nice. Then to worry about all their stuff, uh dying uh yeah so just here under the sovereignty of the first hanoverian king there were a few stirring events in the colony the history of our there were, there were a few stirring events not a lot of them ago uh the, the history of our island in this reign is a chronicle of the piping times of peace english trade flourished settlements increased uh the poor newfoundland planter no longer listened to the dreaded war hoop of the abernaki or the yeah the tramp of the invading french soldiers which is nice you know just have a little break from all the plundering and murders um 
What does I say here? Uh, oh, yeah. So, okay, here's the other thing. So, remember what I said about the, the planters and the, the fishing admirals from Devonshire kind of getting along because they had a common enemy in the French and the Indians? Well, as soon as the Treaty of Utrecht was signed in 1713 and things went back to normal, um, things went back to normal. Uh, they started butting heads again. You know, the admirals were trying to, you know, fuck everybody over. They were bribing the governor again. All this is just back to business as usual. So that didn't help. Like they got along until they had, they didn't have to anymore. Cool. Um, yeah. It's something we had peace and SDN and that getting along. Pictures. Oh yeah. When once the stern pressure of war was removed by the peace of 1713, all the old quarrels revived. The fishing admirals and the merchant adventurers returned, returned to their normal habits of disorder, tyranny, and persecution. Awesome. Fuck. Oh, it's never, it's never just great, eh? Um, so yeah, and things actually, in a way, got all, went from bad to worse almost, because now there's new bribery, there's like open opportunities coming up, because now the, the, the war is over and shit, so it's just fucking stupid. Um, yeah, this unfortunate condition of affairs was due to the extraordinary imbecility of the British government. Classic. Um, they endeavored to rule the colony without a governor, to defend it from invasion without adequate military or naval force, to distribute justice without duly constituted courts or laws made by the authority of imperial parliament. In fine, they went on administering the affairs of the island in the most blundering manner and then stupidly wondered because the inevitable result was chronic disorder and chaotic confusion. That's what happens when you're not hands-on, you need boots on the ground, you gotta actually be there to see what's going on. Um, that reminds me of that time Danny Williams burned Paul McCartney on the fucking TV. We're here, we're here, Danny. No, you're not, you're in PEI. Shut up. Danny who's will be, um... Uh, also, okay, yeah, super weird. Uh, so Placentia at this time, after the treaties of Placentia was was English, but it was actually placed under the governance of the governor of Nova Scotia. So even though like we had our own governor and stuff like that, ish, um, Placentia was given over to the governor of Nova Scotia, I think. So they, uh, and this was kind of like just, um, pardon me, uh, take a drink, uh, it's sympathy from the queen at the time. Um, uh, it was, yeah, it was some kind of gift from the queen to Nova Scotia and to the French Protestants who were living there, because French Protestants were under a lot of persecution from Louis the Fourteenth. Uh, they were facing the, the big choppy guillotine riggy diggy. Um, so they were, uh, they were placing the government. It was a kindness, uh, and she offered basically for any French who were facing persecution in, in Lacadie, um, they could, I think they had Lacadie at the time, or where, wherever the French over that way, New Brunswick area, um, they were welcome to come settle in Placentia without fear of harassment and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice, but uh, it wasn't that easy because when the French left Placentia, when they when they get the fucking boot, of course, much you know there was, there was terms drawn up, and a lot of the French sold their stuff to the English, so they weren't really able to come back to anything. They were kind of like, well, what the fuck is going on? Um, so yeah, it was Tangle Town there for a little bit. Um, okay, so moving on, yeah, then we start to talk about um, the fucking Biscians. Remember those guys? Yeah, uh, there was like the Spanish, there was the French, then there was Biscians, Biscios, or Biscia. I don't know what the fuck it was. I, 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 if I if I prepared this recording or video at, at all before, like I just read the book, I take the notes and I record it right away while it's still fresh in my head. I don't do all the extra research necessarily. So uh, uh, Biscians, anyway, is a, is a chunk on Spain there, like around who where P Portugal is now. I fuck. Listen, look it up. Uh, but anyway, the Biscians, they were here, they would, they would, like, wail and stuff like that on, on the West Coast, remember? Um, so, yeah, so the poor Biscians, who, they came over, they came over again after the war and stuff like that, and they, they were kind of led to believe by the Spanish, and probably through the French at that time, that, uh, they still had fishing rights in Newfoundland, and then in reality, the English were kind of like, what the fuck are you talking about, my son? No, you don't. Like, get the Jesus out. So, they, they, the Biscians had shown up in Placentia, and then having to turn around and head back. This was one particular instance, um, I don't know, uh, 17, let's, let's say 1706, what the fuck, um, correct me, you're not gonna look it up, uh, 
Uh, the English governor of Central Order of the Way. Yeah, so the French had uh, the French did have their coast, so the, the top part of Newfoundland there, you know. Um ar- around like Twillingate, Fogo, you know, Fogo, Twillingate, Morton's Harbor, all of Bayburn, Northern Peninsula, stuff like that. Um the French had their coast, which is where they ran into issues with the what's what he what uh, DW calls the Red Indians, of course. We all know those uh, to be the Biothic people. Um is this where I, seriously where I stopped taking notes? Okay. Um, okay, I have a quote on page 277 here. There was some debate between whether, you know, the French the French were, at the time would have had you say that there was no English settlements up along the coast at the time. There were. Um, we've, we've already talked about this a little bit, that they explored there and stuff. They're, they might not have been huge, but they were there. Um, uh, anyway, so DW disputes this he's like well no he just kind of mentioned this that they're saying this we know this to be different um just kind of like we were already here he really fucking likes that doesn't he um yeah okay so on page 277 here it just says the reason why our opponents selected this portion of the coast is very obvious talking about the french in terms of the coast that they selected um in in the, the getting the fucking over the english or the, the blunder of, of the english signing the treaty of utrecht um, the reason why our opponents selected this portion of the coast is very obvious. It contained a number of excellent harbors. It was removed from the dreaded enemies, the Red Indians, and the English. And for fishing vessels, it afforded the very best field for operations. We know from the records that the French moved out, uh, moved about a good deal, shifting their quarters more often than the English. He says oftener, which I don't think is a word anymore. Um, shifting their quarters more often than the English. Here, at Petit Nord, uh, they had the best part of the northeast coast and the Straits of Belle Isle, then as now, uh, the very best fishing ground in the colony. So, yeah, that's the thing, right? So the English could have had the whole island. The French end up getting, like, the, the best fucking chunk of it, and they, they, they lost placentia. But at that point, they're almost kind of like, well, who gives a shit? Um, so we have that. Um, yada, yada, yada. Oh, oh, man, I love picture pages. It's, ah, it's just great, right? Big old picture page. Um, we have a we have a, a French map of the territory this time. This is what Newfoundland looks like on their map. A little more squishy, um, different. I I do. It's kind of funny seeing all the way that they uh, that they would chart all the different uh, all the all the maps differently like that. Um, but a lot, yeah. So the French were doing pretty good still for having surrendered. Um, and here it says uh, just at the bottom of page two seventy nine. There can be no surer guide to the nationality of the occupiers of the Newfoundland coast. Then the names of the various harbors is what I mentioned at the beginning. Um, Placentia Bay, St. Mary's Bay, Fortune Bay, uh, and the western shore towards Cape Ray all testify by their nomenclature to French occupation. Similarly, <laughs> such vulgar English names as Betts Cove, Tilt Cove, Seldom Come By, seldom come by. Um, Nippers Harbor, Joe Bat's Arm, Leading Tickles undoubtedly prove the presence of English fishermen as the occupiers and first settlers in these localities. Uh, turning Partridge Point, and going around there, we find uh, the bottom of White Bay, the Quipburn, mainly French names showing that these harbors were used by their, oppo- uh, by their opponents. Um, the following historical evidence bears out the same conclusion. But that happens on page 280, which means... We done. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're, they're talking about now just sort of moving. Uh, so, yeah, so the English kept all of this shit. The French ended up with, like, a bunch of this sort of coast. Like, fucking West Coast stuff was over here. Not a lot going on at the time, you can see. And then, you know, all this stuff over here. So going pretty good for the French at the time, even though they've surrendered. Um... So, cool, new king, uh, and that's it, a little bit of a short one today, I'm not mad at it, um, you know, they can't all be 14 page appendixes, uh, but I am glad when they are. I hope everybody's doing okay, uh, happy Easter weekend to, uh, to you all, um, you know, sucks, we're, we shouldn't be getting together to do food and stuff, you don't need to hear me say the same shit that everyone else is saying, so I won't, just... It's important that we we do hang in there, guys. Could be a long one, but it's fun. Break out the fancy hats, do some stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh God! Cheers. <laughs>